Uh, hi there, thank you for joining me. We're going to be doing some linear fencing using ArcGIS today. So earlier this evening I was out and I was wondering what I could do to show you guys. And I thought I should uh, do some linear fencing. So I took a bus trip from Bedford to Cranfield and it lasted for 22 minutes. I was in a bus and I used my phone to take uh, the G uh, the tracks using a GPS application on my phone and I ended up with a GPX file which I have now on my desktop and then we're going to use that to determine at which point during my travel was the driver going at the faster speed so let's get started so in ArcGIS there's a tool called GPX to Features and it allows you to convert GPX files to feature class. So I'm just going to type in GPX and the such and uh, GPX to Features and I'm just going to locate my GPX track I took earlier which is this one. I'm going to open it and I'm going to I hate renaming. I'm just going to rename this to V2C underscore points because it's going to convert the GPX file to a point chip file. And uh, here it is. So I started my trip up here at Bedford and straight down to Cranfield. So it's just for one track. So what I want to do now, because this is a point file, I want to convert it to a linear feature, so I can do some linear offense. And what I then what I do is I'm just going to use the points to line two to convert this point to a linear feature. And I'm going to put in the points there. And I'm going to call this B to C underscore line. By the way the B2C means Bedford to Cranfield and I'm gonna OK that and I should have a, a linear feature so just one single line but I still cannot use this for my linear fencing because uh, the special thing about linear fencing is it uses a root feature class and the root feature class holds an M value so it's a polyline M feature class and the M value stands for measure and the measure is determined by the user so you can decide to want to uh, segment your line based on kilometer based on wind speed based on hours based on minutes depending on what project you're doing in my own case I'm gonna my measure is gonna hold minutes since my whole trip lasted for 22 minutes so it's going to be represented in the M value so what I'm going to do now is convert this ordinary linear feature to a root shape file so I can put in some M, va M values into my line and we can use that M value to determine at which point at which exact minute was the driver going at the faster speed here in the trip and to do that, I'm going to use the create route tool. I'm just going to search for it. Create route. And here it is. Create route. Yeah, sorry. But before I do that, I just want to let you know that even though my data frame reads meters, it's because my data frame is projected to British National Grid. And my data that I've been using, the, the GPX, it's uh, it's not projected, it's just in the geographic coordinates and that will not be suitable for our analysis because we're going to be doing some linear fencing and most of the times your, your data in geographic coordinates with decimal degrees and they're not necessarily suitable for most of GIS analysis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform this layer to projected file and to easily do that I can just right click on the file here and go to data and go to export data 
and I'm going to select the data frame because I know the data frame is in the right projection. So I'm saying use the same coordinates as the data frame. And I'm just going to call this B2C underscore approach for projected. And OK that. And I'm going to say yes. And I can take off the other layers that are in the geography coordinates. And I can stick to my projected layer now. And don't forget, I started my trip up here and down here was my endpoint. And now I'm going to create a route out of this linear feature. And I'm going to put in my projected linear feature into it. And I'm going to use my ID as the root ID field. And I'm going to call this B2C underscore root. So this is going to be my root layer and measure source i'm going to use length here length means uh, it's going to use the total length of the linear feature so since arcgis is able to calculate uh, on the fly your the length of your linear feature so it's just going to automatically calculate the, lead, the total uh, distance of my line and it's going to interpolate all of that into my end value if that makes sense and here it's asking me where it should start as the as the start point so in a linear feature there's always a start point and, a, and an end point so i'm gonna say i started my trip up here bedford and my end point was down here in cranfield so my measure source is going to be length and I think this time around I should send it to a geodatabase actually and I'm going to call this uh, b2c underscore root and I'm going to save that and I'm going to say so my start point was upper right so I'm going to just tell it that upper right is going to be my start point upper right and I'm just going to click on OK and hopefully it should give me a new file which is going to be a root file and if we look into the attribute table it should hold an m value so here it holds an m value and the total length of my trip was 4819 meters because the data is in meters so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to relate this track with an event so since i said my trip took me 22 minutes i'm going to segment my lines into two minutes interval so in every two minutes i want to see up which of this every two minutes did he go faster did he go fastest rather so i wanna so we're gonna i'm gonna symbolize this track in other words i'm gonna symbolize it in two minutes interval and within that two minutes interval i can determine at what at what segment of those intervals did he go fastest but before i do that i still have not told arcgis what my measures is holding is it minutes is it hours is it wind speed or whatever it is and i need to do that manually so since i know this whole track lasted for 22 minutes i'm just going to start my editor start editing let me say okay and i'm just going to double click on my tracks Okay, so now I did click on the on the root feature class and I'm just gonna click on the sketch properties. And on the, in the M value you will notice it's interpolating these intervals based on the uh, total length in meters, but I don't want it to be in meters, I wanna calculate this in minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna right click on my layer and I'm gonna root measure editing and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say drop measures. So my M values goes to any N and I'm just gonna start from the beginning at uh, zero minute 
and my last minute is going to be 22 minutes because my trip ended at 22 minutes and I'm just going to right click back on that same layer and go, go to root measure editing and I'm going to say calculate NAM and it's automatically going to interpolate between all of those vertices it's going to interpolate it in minutes so my trip ended at 22 minutes and it started at 0 minute so that's fine I'm going to click on finish sketch close this and I can save and the next thing I want to do now is I want to create an event and you can do that by creating a different table for the event and you can uh, join that to your existing root feature but before you do that just like every other join you will need a unique field or a common field between the two the, the two features so the table and the feature class you need to have one unique uh, one unique uh, field that can join both of them so to do that I'm just going to start editing and add a new field so add field I'm going to call this uh, root ID and I'm going to leave it as a short integer I'm going to ok that and I want this root ID to be root ID number one because my root is just one feature so it's just one so I'm going to call it root ID one start editing and I'm just going to type in one and save edit and I can close it and now to create a table since I know I want to segment this line into every two minutes interval I can create a table with a from and to measure and that's the unique thing about the table you use for linear referencing there's always going to be a from measure field and a to measure field so from which measure and to which measure so in my case it's going to be from measure 0 to measure 2 and measure 2 to measure 4 so every 2 minutes interval that's what I'm going to be doing so what you want to do is just create a normal table go to wherever you want to put it right click new table and you can do that and you can start uh, populating your table but to save time I created a table for us but we're just going to quickly have a look at it so I'm going to open the table so I do have a from measure and a to measure and I have a ID field which is one to help us uh, make both uh, features compatible so here I have a root ID one and here I have ID one so it's going to be easy for us to join both layers so I have from 0 minute to 2 minutes, from 2 minutes to 4 minutes, from 4 minutes to 6 minutes. So a 2 minute interval till, till the end of my trip. So what I want to do now is I want to make an event between this table that I've created and my root feature class. And when you make sure you're in an editing session, you're going to click on this one called uh, add root events. I'm just going to click on that and it's going to bring up this uh, box here and it's populated some fields already but I can change them the root ID is going to be ID and um, the P2 see the root ID is going to be root ID that's the one we created that holds one and the table is B2C and the root identifier is going to be ID so they both have the same one one features here and my event is going to be a linear type of event a line event and it's going to be uh, the from measure is going to be from from measure and to measure is going to be to measure so from is zero minutes to is two minutes the other one is four minutes the other one is six and it goes in two minutes interval so within that two minutes i want to be able to determine when did the driver go fastest so i can click on ok and it's created a, a temporary b2c underscore events layer this is temporary and if I close ArcMap it's gonna just disappear so you might want to save this uh, if you don't know how to do that you can right click on that data export data so you can have it as permanent file but just for this purpose we're just gonna symbolize this to see how it looks like so I can turn off this one and I can go into the layer properties I can go to symbology categories and I can say I want to 
uh, I want to categorize this uh, data using the to measure. So I want to see it in every uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 till the end of the minute. So every 2 minutes each, I can click on the first one, hold and shift, click on the last one, right click, um, pop selected layer, I'm just going to increase the length, the width to 3 and probably give it a more distinctive color. So I can see every 2 minutes within my line and now I can start to see uh, start to make sense out of this data so every color here represents every two minutes so this is going to mean that the, the the segment or the every the color with the highest distance is going to be the one with the fastest speed because if you can cover 1000 meters here and it covers 1500 meters here that means we moved fastest within these two minutes because each of these colors is segmented equally based on minutes not distance so my measure here is minutes and not distance so i can now go to double click on the b2c events or oh, just sorry i'm just gonna right click on it and it has a distance field which I've calculated already and this distance represents uh, the distance of every two minutes so I can symbolize my data based on minutes uh, I can double click on it, go to levels and I'm going to enable the levels and I'm going to use distance as the level field make this a bit bigger Collect to red and I'm going to OK that so every uh, segment has its own uh, distance and I can just do right click on this go to actually table and I can rearrange the distance field based on uh, let's say the sending so this is the one with the highest distance in the two minutes so basically this is the point which the driver was going at the faster speed during the trip so that's it i hope you guys enjoyed the video so the driver was really going at a higher speed here i don't know at what speed but this was the point he was going fastest among the rest of the two minutes interval so thank you for watching if you enjoyed please hit the like button thank you very much